It's 10 o'clock Mountain Time. It's Thursday, February 4th, 2021. That means it's time for Tom and Shane on uh, YouTube and Facebook Live. And uh, we like having you guys along with us. Thanks for uh, showing up today. And uh, well, Shane, we've got a great topic uh, today. We're going to talk about um, why your small business advertising isn't working. And uh, we have a whole bunch of things to talk about. Uh, about that. But before we do that, of course, we've got some uh, a few things to take care of that if you're watching us on YouTube, of course, you'll want to subscribe and click the notification bell and like us uh, over there on uh, YouTube. And also we're on Patreon. So uh, if you would like to support our show monetarily, we would appreciate that very much. There are some costs involved in putting this up that are not insignificant, but <laughs> there there are some certainly. Well, and, yeah, uh, we'll... this is like an information buzz for business and people who want to start their own business, and uh, yeah. you know that what you could provide for to us mm -hmm. to save you thousands of dollars to go to school or online or you yeah. know. I was going to say we should pay for ourselves. I think, uh, yeah, <laughs> and if you want to go. There's a minimum of three bucks a month. I mean, come on, yeah. <laughs> well, 10 cents a day. You can't t spend 10 cents a day to support the two mm -hmm. of us. I mean, come on, uh, you got to do that. And if you uh, go to a higher level, uh, then you get personal stuff from us that regular folks don't get. And, so, and uh, that, you can ask us questions and we'll give you immediate yeah. answers. Yeah, that's yeah or if you've got, uh, yeah, or if you've got a business challenge of some kind, uh, if we don't know the answer, we will put you in touch with those who do. Oh, Somehow no, you don't have all the answers, Eagle Man. Don't well, say uh, it would be hard. Have, you know, hey, listen, uh, after, the two of us, we have 150 years of life experience. I was going to say, as long as we've been doing this, and as long as we've been talking about business, I think uh, we can... We can probably help you out a lot, whether it's yeah. employees or, you know, whatever it happens to be. So, so good. Um, well, of course, we're here every Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, we'll take on a business topic to help your smaller home-based business or startup business succeed. And uh, for uh, more small business tips, uh, visit our website, TomAndShane.com. Uh, we've got tips and things over there that we don't always have here. So, um uh, go over and bookmark that site and let us know what you think. And uh, our political show is on every Saturday, uh, 8 to 11. We combine business with politics because they kind of go together. You know, if, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of business law out there. So we talk about that, of course. And if you missed any of our past shows, well, hey, no need to worry. Uh, they're all on KMMSAM.com. Don't forget the AM. KMMSAM.com. Click on Tom and Shane's podcast, and uh, you'll get our audio and video, both, whatever is available over there. So, And I get it. Right. And kudos to uh, the Eagle Man, Tom Eaglehoff. He's yeah. the director, producer, and creator of our website. Wow, it's fabulous. It's simple. Yeah. Tomandshane.com. <laughs> I have to thank you. You you overdid yourself. It was it's really excellent. So you can get yeah. all the shows on there. It's we got to yeah. get this to go viral. This has got to go viral. <laughs> got to go viral. Yeah, absolutely right. So, yeah, we uh, we appreciate it. And uh, as I say, um, you know, we're going to put up uh, a lot of things over on TomAndShane.com to help your small business. Uh, things, um, you know, tips and things that we've learned over the years and how to advertise here or market this or uh, do this and that. And, of course, we'll uh, have our shows up as well over there. Uh, so by all means, uh, check it out. Tom and Shane dot com. What's not to like? <laughs> so, well, talking about um, why your advertising isn't working, Shane. Uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of reasons, as as we um, as we all know. But the big one is in uh, small towns or small markets are with small businesses. In many cases, uh, you just don't have the resources to do TV or you know do a, a massive mailing or things like that. So you're kind of uh, you're kind of stuck a little bit. Um, so the advertising that you are able to afford has to be done with very little error. Uh, otherwise, it's just a waste of a waste of money. 
And of course, um, you know, as we say, advertising must always be uh, an investment. It can never be an expense. It must always be an investment. Uh, absolutely. And that's why we've covered the, this in our previous shows with your marketing plan. That should be five years and uh, cover a budget you'll have for specifically uh, advertising. Networking is the best thing in a small town, obviously. Word of mouth is the best because you build on the character that you have. And uh, so, yeah, today, though, it's a issue of a product, I think, more than a service, because if you have a good product, you know, something you create like honey or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, fresh vegetables, you know, things of that nature, especially vegetables, because, mm -hmm. you know, they, they, the, the shelf life is so small, you know, and, and it's seasonal where you mm -hmm. depending on where you live. Right. So True. The, the, yeah. oh, those are a couple of reasons you want to look at what we're talking about today. But keep in mind, word of mouth and networking is the best advertising. Those are great. Yeah. But, um, you know, there's only so many hours in the day. You know, I always, I always yes. tell people, that, you know, if you're if you're doing jobs, uh, you're not out looking for new jobs. And if you're out looking for new jobs, you're not making any money doing jobs. So you've got to uh, you got to be able to do both uh, both of these things. Uh, so, um, you know, but the big question I think we need to start with, Shane, is uh, what exactly do we want the advertising to accomplish? Are we? Are we building our company name? Are we uh, doing a product? Uh, uh, you know, what do we want this to do? Do we want a, a lead generation? Uh, do we want customers? Or do we want an ad that just uh, says, hey, come in and buy this. Here's, here's the price. Come and get it. You know, That's so. right. What we're going to talk about today is branding. We've talked about this mm -hmm. before. But it is an essential aspect uh, of your company. Branding is your name. Branding is your product or service. Mm -hmm. And branding is your personality because personality has a lot to do with it, of uh, uh, you yep. know, and and how you interact with people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's for sure. So, but uh, you know, we want to we want the advertising when we sit down and think about where are we going to advertise, what's our message going to be. Uh, the end result is, what do we want this advertising to do for us? Um, and uh, one of the things um, that I mentioned. Um, in uh, my uh, last book that I wrote, uh, a college professor or, or a, uh, well, when a college, yeah, it was a college professor, I guess, that told me the story about a, a guy who uh, wanted to uh, hunt tigers. And uh, <laughs> they <laughs> and uh, he went to the wise men and said, hey, how can I hunt a tiger? And uh, the wise men said, uh, uh, learn the ways of a tiger. <laughs> If you're going to hunt a tiger, learn the ways of a tiger. So uh, learn the ways of your customer. What do your customers want? And uh, what, well, what do you have that customers need or want? Uh, that's the big thing. You that's know, right. You, and, whether, yeah. and whether it's sound on the radio or it's even visual because you decide to do television, which Tom has talked about, be your own spokesman. You know, get a, get be the guy that's uh, you know uh, recording the ads for radio or doing the television show. Uh, uh, the uh, the best example in America is the Pillow Man. You know, so mm -hmm. all follow that. He he has gone from a drug drug uh, a druggy you know almost over do dosed in Mexico to a multimillionaire because he worked hard. Took him what twenty years, right, Tom? But he got oh the job. yeah. Yeah, it took a long time. Yeah, came up with an idea, and that's what a lot of people do. Started in a small warehouse and, uh, you know, with his uh, son and uh, figured out, uh, you know, how to do this. And now it's a national it's a national brand. So it's an and, institution, and, and it's a really important because he, it took him 10 years to get yeah. recognition by the uh, different associations about yeah. pillows and sleeping. And so he's managed yeah. to corner uh, or garner, you know, all those uh, appropriate uh, associations and and uh, and so forth <laughs> to recognize his product as one of the best, if not the best. So yeah. this is where you want to go, folks. That's why we're talking about it. That's for sure. So, well, uh, the next uh, thing we've got to do is we got to talk about you've got two choices uh, that you uh, that you need to think about here. And one is. Um, you know, you can hire an advertising agency if you can afford one, or if it's cost prohibitive, you're going to have to do it yourself. 
And of course, that's what we're going to deal with today is how to do it yourself. Uh, because uh, in, in most cases, uh, startup businesses or small businesses or even uh, even storefront mom and pops, um, you know, have a limited amount of uh, resources available to them. And okay. they've got to, um, you know, they've, they've got to uh, uh, use that money efficiently because, as I say over and over, advertising must be an investment. It has to produce more than it costs. It can never and be an expense. It has to pay for itself. That's right. And, and another thing that's this is sort of important because it's the 21st century. Social networking is, can be a big win because there's so little cost mm-hmm. in it. Selfie advertise, uh, advertising works. And mm-hmm. if you can come up with a gimmick, you know, something that's humorous or personal family, mm-hmm. you know, do a selfie, try to see if you can get it to go viral. And while yes, uh, it, with the website we will talk about and have in the past that you will want to have, if it's a product, you could very well have it go viral and enhance your sales in, immensely. Just so, these are the things that are so important now that you want to choose. So it's not just television, not just radio, but it could be a selfie, you know, on the exactly. internet. Exactly. Yeah. Well, another thing, as long as we're t- talking about social, um, uh, social media advertising here briefly, uh, the biggest mistake people make with social media advertising is it's all about me, me, me. Yeah, that's uh, right. Nobody wants to go to a website and hear about you. You know, what they want to do is they want to go to a website and learn something or be informed or be entertained or educated or whatever. Uh, So about 70 percent of your social media uh, uh, posts should be helpful to the consumer. Uh, What are the 10 things you know before you have carpet installed? Um, You know, how to pick a good mechanic. Um, you know, things like that. They should be educational so people will keep coming back to be informed about things in your industry, in your particular business. And uh, the other 30% you can throw in, we're having a sale this weekend or whatever it is. So that's right. And, it, you know, uh, here's a new thing at the 21st century I highly recommend because it was always a sales practice anywhere I worked or people I trained. When someone came in, a client or or a new customer, preferably in the 21st century, uh, you know, walk up, but don't don't ask them if I may I help you. You know, it's just it's really nice to see you make it personal. I I so much appreciate you coming to my store. And, you know, we do have sales on and uh, I'm trying to outreach to everyone that comes in. And if I if you'd be kind enough to give me your email address you know, I can provide you with an ongoing reference, uh, you know, by Facebook or just by uh, email of what we're doing and uh, save you the time to come down and, and you know, and uh, see what we were up to, uh, you know, on the weekend. So make it a personal introduction. Don't ask about what they may or may not be looking for, you know, and then just sort of wind into, you know, you'd help me out a lot and trying to build my, like, make it personal. I, and mm-hmm. may I may I have your email address? So yeah. wind into it. Don't don't go at it hard. Come at it soft. Don't wait for them to come to the till to make a purchase, and then at the till you say, "Oh, may I have your email address?" That that's really improper treatment of a customer. It's it's not personal, and it's too mm-hmm. business too business. Because when someone makes a final choice to purchase from you, they're making a decision. They don't you know don't don't confuse that decision you want to make that sale but you still want to get in you want to maintain contact with new customers yeah customer questions there's two kinds um closed uh question closed end questions and open-ended questions uh closed end questions can i help you can be answered yes or no um that's open-ended questions are uh, um you know something that require requires a a response uh, of some kind, but not yes or no. So that's right. So after you have this personal conversation that I've suggested, you know, uh, you might say to them, instead of what are you looking for? You might say, uh, are you looking for a, uh, are, are you looking for a gift today? Mm-hmm. You know, because yeah. now you open, like Tom said, that's an open ended question. And if, if mm-hmm. they've responded to you at this point positively, they'll probably discuss mm-hmm. it with you. Oh, it, yes, it's a birthday yeah. gift or an anniversary mm-hmm. gift. And, 
you know, and, yeah. and, and you can try and upsell people. Remember sure. a big part of what you do in your own business is mm -hmm. try to buy, get, get not, you want to sell someone up. In other words, yeah. they may have come in for one thing, but they buy mm -hmm. like going to Costco, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> you, yeah. you really go in for three things, but you come out with two dozen. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the thing to think about if you're, you know, when you're talking to people in a selling situation, don't think of yourself as a uh, seller buyer. Uh, put yourself in the shoes. Correct. You're an, you're an assistant buyer to that customer. You're their assistant buyer. You're there to you're inform their them. Yeah. You're, the, yeah, you're, you're there friend. to, yeah, you're there to inform them of their choices and the advantages of those choices and, um, you know, go from there. So, so advertising exactly. mistakes, where, <laughs> where do I start? Well, you start with the business plan. We've talked about that in the past. Uh, check our uh, uh, YouTubes for uh, business plan. And uh, we talked about that. I think uh, one of our first shows we started doing here on business. So uh, those are over there, but um yeah, the business plan is just your roadmap for success. And one of the things that's going to have in there is your target market, who that is, uh, how old, education, income, kids, etc. cetera. And um, you, what you need to do is find the target market that meets up with your, uh, your product or service. And it's that's right. And we've covered the other two that are just as important, but you can you have, you need, you're required to, for your own success to have all three, you know, your financial plan that goes out mm -hmm. five years, what you're expecting your growth to be and your marketing plan, which of course we're covering in depth today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the other thing, uh, let's start with uh, what I call the fab four of advertising. There are four things you want your advertising to accomplish. We, we basically uh, covered a little bit of them in our opening here, but we're going to, we're going to repeat them in a little more detail as we go along here. So uh, the first, uh, well, the four things that you, um, that you want to uh, look for uh, in your advertising, well, you want your advertising to be to try to do one of four things or multiples of four things. First, uh, you, you want your advertising to provide information about your company to your customers, uh, create an image of the comp of the company, uh, get sales leads, uh, for your uh, company or your sales force. And most important of all, uh, we want, um, we want our advertising to sell, uh, something. So that's right. So we're gonna, so yeah, that, that's right. And and it, 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 the first one is Tom has brought up the mm -hmm. provide information about your company to your mm -hmm. customers. Um, the, the key about your uh, about providing the information is how you go about it. Uh, you, you that's why creating these plans that we've talked about, and in this case, your marketing plan is so important, is because it helps you already have rehearsed. You 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 know in your mind that you want to provide information. But it's it's a personal input you want to provide. So you make the customer co comfortable by commenting on the products, maybe, and uh, the, where you get them. Like if, if you get them from India or you get them from Thailand or, you know, it, it sort of makes the cus customer feel comfortable that you're doing good mm -hmm. on a global basis. That you're, it's an outreach. So th this is the kind of information that you want to be able to provide people. Makes them comfortable makes them feel like buying something is a good thing because it's a you know everyone has to make the decision do i want it or do i need it so you 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 want to convince them they want it <laughs> that's for sure yeah well they uh we touched on information advertising earlier when we were talking about social media that your mm -hmm. advertising isn't about you um, you know, you can talk about being in business for a long time if that benefits the customer in some way that's correct. You know, I always, I always say, if, uh, you know, when I do uh, seminars and things like that, I say, if you're an old business, uh, you know, you can, uh, you know, you're, uh, you're uh, tried and proven. Uh, if you're a brand new business, you're cutting edge technology. <laughs> that's, what you, <laughs> that's what you start out with. So. You, and you're the latest and newest thing. So, so number two of the four fab four is to create an image of the company for your customers mm -hmm. and image. We've talked 
about, uh, and it's so important because you, again, want the customer to understand what your intent is, you know, why you did this, what, what, what the epiphany was, what, what caused you to share with the customer, what, what, what caused you to decide to provide this product or service? You know, was it because it's a family situation, you know, second, third generation, um, because you found these products um, or just because you finally decided that you wanted to take that big jump and have your own company and work for yourself, you know, live to work. This, this is the best time of your life to not work for someone. You know, if you work for the man, he's in charge. But, you know, if you live to work, you work for yourself. Yeah, in, in this one, your image, uh, you know, could be your personal image. You as the owner, it could be, as uh, as uh, Shane pointed out earlier, uh, talking about uh, the Pillow Man and also uh, Dave Thomas of Wendy's when he was alive was the, uh, you know, the guy at Wendy's. And, and there are uh, several people who put themselves out there, um, you know, to uh, build that particular image of, uh, of themselves. But... Uh, you know, I, and I mentioned this um, um, when uh, I worked in San Diego uh, for a, a video chain. Uh, we just put a small one inch ads in the San Diego newspaper everywhere they would let us. Well, they let us because we paid them. <laughs> but but okay. uh, we had these one inch ads that just said the name of the company and the number of stores. And we kept crossing out four stores, six stores, crossed out six stores, 10 stores, you know, whatever. And uh, as we grew, um, you know, people saw that ad and didn't think anything about it. Their subconscious recorded it. And when they're driving down the street, they would see the company name and didn't realize where they saw it, but they recognized it and recognized it for what it was. That's right. And, and here's a, a this is a good one, I think. Um, you know, the 20s in the 20s is the best decade of your life. It's me, my and I. And if you if you've grown up and whatever age it was, you decided I wanted to go into business for myself. But, uh, you know, you have to do things to prepare for it, especially networking. In all small cities, you know, there's men's clubs and men's and women's clubs. Um, in the case of men, there's the Lions Club, the Shriners, the Knights of Columbus. And these are things you should join because it's incredible networking to mm -hmm. professionals um, in, your, in your community, uh, you know, law lawyers, accountants, doctors, and so forth, pharmacists. And, you know, women associations out there as well. Join them before you start your business. Accelerate. Go to those meetings. Learn. Talk to people. Uh, those are people that have a lot of knowledge. And it's a great source. Yeah, those are people who business, are going to recommend need an accountant. You. Yeah. Yeah, those and are people, the, and are the people you're going to need. They're, you know, they're accountants. And, but there are also people you meet, you'll need. You're going to need an accountant. You're going to need a, a, a lawyer. It, it's better that you've developed a personal relationship with someone prior to going into business than starting your business and having to find someone. So this is a way to enhance what you want to do someday to uh, live to work. So, yeah, jo join associations. It's a great way to create an early image of yourself in a small town. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, another one of the Fab Four, uh, we've got to talk about lead generation. So this is where, uh, you know, uh, if you're a uh, attorney or if you're a accountant or, um, you know, a professional person uh, or just, um, you know, if you're selling uh, whatever it is, uh, um, you know, you want uh, you want some leads to go out and follow up on uh, customers who are interested in the product. They've returned to they've returned a mailer. They've returned, uh, um, you know, uh, sent an email to you, whatever it is. Um, so we want to uh, say, hey, do you know uh, this company is here and here's what we do and here's what we do for you. Uh, give us a call. That's right. And, follow you know, up. in a small town. Um, I I found because as a young man, uh, I started off one of the things I did when I was eight years old was deliver newspapers. Mm -hmm. And so I got a business card and I printed up a flyer 
and uh, I would go and knock on people's doors, you know, to see if they wanted the newspaper. And then I'd, you know, fold the flyer with, and staple the business card to it, you know, and slip it into the door. There's always space in a door to slip a little flyer for people to look mm -hmm. at when, you know, they open their front door. Th that's yeah. the type of thing that Tom and I are talking to you about, how you mm -hmm. create leads. So you go for a nice walk with, with your, your significant other or with your dog. Well, not with your dog because you don't want to go to the front. That's a bad advice. Yeah. Don't don't take your dog. <laughs> take but your you know, cat. you, yeah, you know, take, take a friend. Um, you know, uh, in or you know, sort of thing. You know, leave them out on the curb, and you know that when when someone opens the door and they see the person, you know, if you're if you're a gentleman and there's a, a woman waiting at the curb, you know that that gives them comfort. But this is a great thing to do because you should walk at you know at least a mile during the summer every day just for the uh, exercise. Cause now they say that's all you need to do. So make it a productive way of generating leads. Yeah. Well, the other thing that, uh, that has to be in your, uh, in your lead generation is there must be somewhere in your ads or somewhere, uh, whatever you're, whatever you're doing, there needs to be a call to action. Uh, the customer needs to do something supplies are limited act now or you know things like that so if you're trying to get leads uh, fear of loss is more uh is always more powerful than expectation of gain so Correct. um exactly so if you're looking for uh, lead generations things like that i agree with shane everybody within walking distance of your home should have your business cards uh um, you know, yeah. take a take a Saturday and take a stroll and just meet everybody in your neighborhood, because sooner or later they may need your stuff. Uh, I know a lot of people pay bills online, but if you're one of the people who uh, who send checks out, uh, in many cases businesses do, uh, they send company checks to pay bills. Uh, throw your business card in there as well, uh, with some kind of uh, maybe an offer on it. Uh, whoever opens that bill and records that check may need your business or service. And, and, and another piece of advice is that when you take these walks, particularly in the spring and summer, and you see people out, you know, I always acknowledge them and tell them what a nice yard they have. Don't, you don't have to tell them who you are, but you know, after yeah. maybe seeing them two or three times, cause you shouldn't walk regularly, like we're t telling you, you know, and you can walk up and, you know, I just mm -hmm. want you to know, give them your name and, and start off with your first, you know, and I, you have such a beautiful yard here. And, and if you can identify something that you're selling in your store, you know, you can say to them, well, here's my card because, you know, you, you might find something there mm -hmm. that will also help your, your garden. And we do have sales. So this is, again, yeah. another way to get out there and generate leads. Best leads are personal ones. Yes, they are. Our referrals, great too. Also, if somebody has referred yeah, right. someone yeah. to you, then that's a great. Uh, so always ask people. You know, if you do a, uh, let's say you do a remodel of a bathroom or something, the first question you should ask when that's done is, who are you going to tell first about your new bathroom? You know, who are you going to talk to this? <laughs> who are you going to talk to about I, this? Uh, up, could I use your by name and maybe to talk, talk to them? <laughs> Yeah, exactly right. And and another thing is I always respond to people, you know, whether it's on social media or on a phone call, you know, mm -hmm. and don't yeah. especially phone calls. Do not wait more than an hour to respond to a phone call. You know, no matter how busy you are, you know, it, it's great to call them back and say, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't call you sooner. Apologize yeah. and just say, mm -hmm. but I have some time now and I, I definitely would like to speak to you. But I always, always you thank the person for taking your call. And then you say, uh, "Am I interrupting you? Are you busy right now?" Yeah. Or so do you have time I'll to talk? That you have time to talk to me. Yeah. 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 Something like that. I always yeah. that respect. Yes. Yeah. And if you're a one-person shop and you're out doing jobs and things like that, your uh, your home phone may be your uh, business line. Uh, my phone, uh, after three rings, goes to my cell phone, so um, I'm always available. Um, you know, if somebody's trying to get get in touch with me, they've got my home phone number or my what is my business phone number, I guess. But um, uh, if I'm out of the office or 
on a job or consulting or whatever I'm doing, uh, that um, uh, any call will go to uh, my cell phone. So not a bad idea. Check with your phone company or your, um, you know, your cell phone provider as to how you can make that happen. It's just a call forwarding. Is all now here, here's an interesting aspect. If you watch the Pillow Man ads, which all of us probably get tired of, sometimes they'll, <laughs> yeah, sometimes They're everywhere. That's right. Sometimes they'll have on the 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 uh, screen a code, a, a four let a four letter number or three three digit number. And they'll say, call now and give us that code. Well, they're doing it for two reasons. The first reason, of course, is to sell you. But the second reason is to find if that hour uh, uh, that they're selling on is a good hour. Because if they get good responses, mm -hmm. because people call with that code number. So think in terms of something like that, meaning small business. You Someone had, comes into your shop regularly. You know what they buy. You know what they per purchase. You know, it's, it's yeah, not one a month but maybe every couple of months and hello mabel this is tom this is shane and uh, just wanted you to know that i got this new shipment of whatever my, my product it is mm -hmm. and uh, thought about you first and so um, if you are interested uh, please come in you get a 20 percent discount and then give them and give them a code the, the code word is for you and your friends uh Happy days, you know, just just again, make it fun and and, uh, and not a hard sell. Never make a hard sell. Yep. Nope. Uh, because you're not selling, you know, mm -hmm. I am people up against the wall and tell them about a movie <laughs> that you liked. <laughs> yeah. So don't 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 verbally slam the customer. <laughs> that's it, it's like the a water way cooler. Yeah. it's like a water cooler or conversation doesn't occur again or today <laughs> yeah. of COVID. Yeah. so create your yeah. own water cooler moment by yeah. you know getting to know your customers and, and just calling them once a month and hello mm -hmm. mabel this is uh, tom this is shane and wanting to know how you're doing how's your garden you know is you yeah. are you know how, how are they are, are the candles did you like the scent or wh whatever make yeah. it personal mm -hmm. You know, let them know you know people love to get a phone call and people love to get mail they really do there are a lot of mm -hmm. lonely people in this world so make <laughs> friends with your customers and then maintain that friendship yep it'll work yeah, it um will. and the other thing um always 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 as soon as you find out the customer's name it might be on their credit card it might be on their you know you may introduce yourself to them but always, always, always use their name when, when uh, you're talking to them. It makes it more personal. It's mm -hmm. not buyer-seller. It's two friends conversing who know each other's names. And once again, out of respect, when you first initiate this personal relationship, you ask, may I call you by your first name? Sure, yeah. It's a real important statement mm -hmm. because it shows respect. I always yeah, show respect. I call you Tom. Um, you know, I, I worked with a guy. His name was Robert, and people used to always call him Bob, and he would correct them. No, yeah. I don't like Bob. It's Robert. <laughs> so, you know, and, and older people, you know. Yeah. Yeah, some um, older you know, people. I go by or, uh, yeah, yeah, or doctor for all right. my, you know, yeah. Don't, don't even think about not calling a doctor doctor. Yeah, for personal reasons, I, my, you know, my Jane, but I, I've always, you know, I've gone by my middle name, but that's always worked out well because I put it on my business card. So I knew when someone called and said, Shane, they knew me. Yeah. <laughs> so now, yeah. you know, uh, friends and pe my, my granddaughter, uh, she uh, at uh, three years old uh, g gave me a term of uh, a, a term of endearment and uh, it, to my grandchildren, I'm Poppy. So mm -hmm. if, if I, if you're in that situation and you have grandchildren, mine call me Poppy, you know, th th these yeah. are the kinds of things that uh, make mm -hmm. it so much easier to sell. Cause yeah. So. All right. Moving right along. We've got to go to ads that sell. And the biggest mistake people make here is a failure. And this is in selling situations too. 68% of people asked why they didn't buy. No one asked me to. They didn't <laughs> ask for the order. Mm -hmm. Didn't ask for the order. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And there's a lot of ways to ask for the order. 
That's Can we important. deliver this Tuesday or Thursday? <laughs> yes, <laughs> ma'am. Ma 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 yeah, yeah. Ma ma Thursday's ma better. Done. Take the. A, this is a good winner. You know, yeah. a lot of people use uh, plastic bags as uh, garbage liners in, in their desk garbage can. Yeah. You know, so, you know, it, this is a good question to ask people. So, you know, you say to them, so, so do you have, a, 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 you know, a, a, a desk ca garbage can? And, you know, if they respond to you, they look at you, they go, w why would you ask? Well, I, I'd rather give you a bigger bag so you can use it <laughs> in your garbage can at home. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. that's the kind of thing they'll laugh. And again, it's comforting. And uh, yeah. so these are the kind of things <laughs> uh, suggesting that, you know, that helps you make that sale. Yeah. All right. Uh, as I mentioned, I used to work for a printing company. I don't know if you can see this or not, but I used to pass these pads out. And the number one thing to do today is uh, page me. That's when we had pagers back in the day. And page me mm -hmm. uh, to uh, get your get your stuff. So my name was always in front of people on those pads. And uh, everybody uses notepads. So, of course, being a printing company, uh, I would take a couple in every time I made a call. So uh, if they didn't, if they couldn't remember my number or whatever, they had it right there on the pad. So uh, that was so the, the other way. side of the plastic. Yeah. So the other side of the plastic bag is a pick pick a bag that, as I said, big enough for you know a desk garbage. But also, small ones get medium one, and uh, because you know here's 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 the comfort here's the comfort line. So I'm sure you mail things to family. And uh, if you prefer not to have plastic, I do have medium sized bags. And these are really good because you can use them if you take them apart to wrap a box and duct tape, duct tape it when you mail it. It protects it and it's a great way of mailing a package um, that you want to send someone, particularly clothing. And astoundingly enough, you can take a medium sized garbage bag, paper bag, Take it apart and you'll find it can cover a very large box and make it safer yeah, it can. to be mailed. Yeah. Well, printing bags and uh, printing uh, uh, things like that are pretty pricey. So, you know, make sure it's worth, That's <laughs> worth doing. <laughs> so the way you get around that are stickers. Yeah. A good sticker, very cheap cheap like literally five you can get like five thousand for like 20 bucks you know and, but i'm not talking about a sticker that's this big i'm talking about a sticker this big that you know you can put on or or you know again on your bags and so again it's making yeah. people aware and rem remind it's like you know a chinese menu everyone keeps in the drawer at home <laughs> <laughs> well, and also too, uh, magnetic business cards. Uh, these are great because you can, uh, you know, if you see somebody's car in the parking lot, as you know, you can just stick a business card on their, on their car with, with well, magnet on the back. You of know, it. I, 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 if you do that, do not put it under the windshield on, on the car. Okay. Cause a lot of no. people won't see well, it. Well, it won't stick. Enough. It's magnetic. It won't go on. No, the no, but I, I'm just talking about your business card. It's not a bad idea to walk through a car, a car uh, you know, uh, a parking area and stick your uh, card, like not in the lower edge of the window, but uh, on the, on the, you know, on the top, it just stick it in there. So if it, you know, so it can stay dry if you're in a, depending on your climate, but it's a lot better that people see the card there and then they take it. Hopefully they don't throw it on the ground if they don't want it. But, you know, the, the bottom line is don't put it in, <laughs> under the windshield because then they have to get back out of their car to get there. Mm. And that does not make people happy. So, yeah, we've uh, learned these uh, things, haven't we, Tom? Well, I would I would advise you not to put anything on under any car wiper or on anybody's car. I just, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, don't do that <laughs> because, well, yeah. there's a couple things wrong with it. One is uh, you're, you're wasting because that person may not be your target market for one thing. You're wasting your cards or whatever they are. 
And the other thing is that you're on private property if you're in a parking lot. So uh, they they can complain to the police and the police, trust me, I've done this. They'll come and see you and tell you, stop. <laughs> and don't put stuff in mailboxes either. Don't, don't put your brochure oh, in a mailbox. <laughs> no, that's, so, that's because they will talk to you. <laughs> that's right. Uh, they will give you a call and talk to you about that. So, <laughs> so that's it. So, all right. <laughs> While we're getting down here, the um, the last word I guess that we need to uh, we need to talk about is that um, that um, it's it goes back to the very first thing we asked. What do you want the advertising to accomplish and uh, match that? objectives of your company with the customers uh, track your advertising uh, ask people how they found you uh, they may not know or they may say i don't know i saw your sign whatever um, you know if if advertising is done correctly uh, it pays for itself and don't forget the best place to put a phone number uh, there are two places to put your phone number one is on your sign at your business because people driving by or sitting in the parking lot can see it the second place is on the back of your vehicle i'm not going to drive beside you and try to copy your name off the side of your vehicle while i'm driving along but if i'm stopped behind you at a stop sign and i say oh i'm i think i need a this painter uh i'll i'll you know for a free quote call uh, this number or you know we'll paint your house we'll pay for the paint you pay for the labor or whatever it is you know so that's right. Make and sure and that you're thing, out there and everywhere. Another issue that we've covered today is when you develop a personal relationship, particularly with a new customer that comes in. And if the conversation is going, because some people, you know, uh, they're, they're maybe not as talkative and they're more introverted. I'm an extrovert, so I can talk to anyone, even in an elevator. But uh, here's a good one. Trust too. me. I, and, I know that personally. <laughs> so uh, here's another question that is very positive. And, and that is, is that, you know, if you're having that conversation and you go, you, you thank them. That, well, I, I thank you so much for coming. And before, I, you know, they don't want to be sold. You know, you can tell. By the way, did, did, were you were, were uh, we recommended uh, to you by someone? And the, the, if the answer is yes, just say, may I ask you their first name and and, uh, you know, if they gave it to you, they go, well, I'd rather not. But if they happen to say, well, it was Betty Monroe. Well, you know, Betty Monroe. So, you know, when the customer leaves the store, you call her up and say, Betty, thank you for referring Ann or George or, you know, I always take advantage of uh, information you've gained. Information helps you network. Network helps you grow. Absolutely. All right, that's going to wrap it up for us today. Hey, don't forget, if you're watching us on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. And uh, when you hit the subscribe button, that little notification bell will come up. Hit that, and that'll let you know every time we have a new podcast. Like us and leave a comment uh, down below if you wouldn't mind doing that. And also, uh, we're on Patreon. Um, if you'd like to support us, uh, our efforts here, and uh, defray some of the costs we have in putting this uh, on, uh, by all means, uh, we would love to have you as a supporter. You can do that for as little as $3 a month. And if you go to $5 a month or more, uh, we have special perks that only you will get. And, of course, if you're a $3 uh, supporter, we will feature you on this show. You're, we'll uh, proudly show your name that you are a supporter if you want us to. If you don't want us to show your name, that's fine, too. But uh, we'll do uh, whichever uh, you want to do so uh, uh, Linda thank you for the great information hey we appreciate it, Linda thanks for being here very much and uh, let's see uh, well don't forget uh, hey if you missed this part uh, part of this show or any show you can watch or listen to past shows at kmmsam.com and of course uh, don't forget our uh, uh, our um, uh, website <laughs> I'll get it in a minute <laughs> <laughs> I'm old, uh, Tom and Shane.com. There's more tips and tricks over there uh, that you might be interested in watching and are reading about. And, um, also, uh, business and politics. Uh, we do that every Saturday, eight to 11 mountain time on KMMSAM.com. 
All you got to do is click listen now. You don't have to sign up for anything. You don't have to leave any personal information. You don't have to join anything. All you have to do is go over there and listen now. So thanks for watching and listening and uh, say goodbye, Shane. Okay. Be safe, everyone. <laughs> and live in the moment. And as we are expressing today, live to work. Come home happy to your family. That's what they want to see when you come through the front door. Amen to that. All right. Uh, let's see. We'll see everybody, I guess, Saturday on the radio, uh, 8 to 11 Mountain Time, uh, KMMSAM.com. We'll be back with another podcast on Tuesday at 10 o'clock Mountain Time. So uh, we hope we will return for that. And until then, uh, we'll say thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you on Saturday.